Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The first step in waxing the number eight will be the bulk addition of wax to the stone model in the prepared areas, making sure to get good adherence of the wax to the soaked model. This bulk addition can be done with the P.K. Thomas number one waxing instrument and it could also be done with the P.K. Thomas number two, which would mean smaller increments of wax. Or it could be done with the small end of the beaver tail waxing instrument, where you would get much larger increments of wax added. You'll want the wax added on the lingual, and you'll want to start the wax addition as well on the labial. And of course the wax can be remelted to establish complete coverage. The first step will be to establish the proper length of the incisal edge. This is done by wax addition with the P.K. Thomas number one waxing instrument. It could be done as well with the number seven wax spatula. You may want to tack some wax to the adjacent central to give yourself an area to build against. Heat the instrument and draw up some wax. Heat the bow again. At this point, we're not particularly interested in smoothness. The only thing that we're trying to establish is the length of the incisal edge which should be identical to the adjacent central incisor. Once the approximate length is established, start working on the mesial incisal angle, which is fairly acute. And on the distal incisal angle, which is more rounded. For minor adjustments in height, go back and lightly remelt some areas. Use the ward fiber handle to carve the incisal edge and shape the distal incisal angle. Use the white end of the inlay brush to brush away the flakes of wax which remain. At this point, check the basic length of the incisal edge, making sure it's compatible with the adjacent central, and that you've started developing the mesial incisal and distal incisal angles. View it from the lingual to make sure that the length is approximately the same size as the adjacent tooth. The next step in waxing will be to establish the proper labial lingual thickness of the incisal ridge. Use the P.K. Thomas number one 
or number two instrument, or the small end of the number seven beaver tail. Add wax right along the incisal edge until you've established the identical thickness as the adjacent central. An alternative method would be to bulk the wax and, of course, carve it back. At this point, looking from the occlusal aspect, the proper thickness is fairly well established. Again, for a little more definition and finish, we can go through and using the smallest end of the P.K. Thomas number no. two waxing instrument, we can remelt without changing the outline shape of the incisal edge. The next step in the waxing of this number eight will be the development of the mesial and distal marginal ridges. Again, this is accomplished by wax addition, probably most easily with the smaller end of the P.K. Thomas number one. Establish the marginal ridge to approximate the adjacent marginal ridge. and then work on the mesial marginal ridge. As this is done, wax only to the prepared margins. Now looking at the adjacent central, the cingulum would be the next area of addition. As you can see, there's very little cingulum development on it, which we can now add. We can now start filling in the lingual surface of this tooth by smoothing the wax and blending the marginal edge into the lingual fossa. Again, this is done by melting the wax. We're adding very little wax. Now, the final development of the lingual side can be accomplished with a P.K. Thomas number no. four instrument, which is not flamed because it's a carving instrument. It can develop the marginal ridge, mesial and distal, so it is flush and continuous with the cut margin of the tooth. Using the wax inlay brush, remove the excess. We could also use the number seven wax spatula, lightly warm it and use it on a carving burnishing type action to develop the marginal ridge and the lingual concavity.
We could also use the broader end of the number seven wax spatula to carve the deepest portions of the lingual concavity and to create a smooth surface. At this point, the lingual anatomy is fairly well developed and the only part left to finish would be to create the labial contour in both the incisocervical direction and the mesiodistal dimensions. This is most easily accomplished again by wax addition, utilizing the P.K. Thomas number one with the P.K. Thomas number two or number seven spatula. The purpose of the wax addition is, of course, to minimize the amount of carving necessary. We also advocate the finger rest for control. At this point, check the margins for uniformity. I think you can see here that we're a little bulky with the wax. We have the cut margin covered, and it will now be a matter of shaping this area, and that can be done with the Ward's fiber handle and a gentle carving pattern. It could also be accomplished with the Peter K. Thomas number no. four waxing instrument or the number no. seven wax spatula. Once the wax margin interface is completed, take the cotton, dip it into the cool water, and polish the surface. Very fine silk weave nylons could also be used for the same purpose, to get the final high luster smooth surface to the wax pattern. The lingual portions can be polished in a like manner with a rubbing, burnishing motion. And now the wax pattern is complete. Having finished the waxing, it's time to clean up the instruments that were used for carving. For instance, the P.K. Thomas number no. four is wiped with cotton. This is an instrument that cannot be placed in the flame. The P.K. Thomas number no. two waxing instrument is an instrument that can be flamed. It's a good idea to warm the end and then wipe it with cotton. The P.K. Thomas number no. one waxing instrument, which was used for the bulk of the work, has accumulated the most wax. Again, melt the wax and wipe the instrument clean so that the next time you start waxing, you'll have clean instruments with which to work. The fiber handle is also an instrument that can be warmed and wiped clean.
These instruments will be your livelihood, and the cleaner you keep them and the neater you keep them, the better they'll work, the neater your projects will be, and the easier the projects will be to complete. The wax can be put aside, the paper towel discarded, and the gas turned off. At this point, let's examine the criterion. The first point is the length of the incisal ridge is identical to that of the adjacent central incisor. The incisal ridge is the same thickness labiolingually as the adjacent central incisor. The mesial incisal angle blends with and is acute as the adjacent central. The distal incisal angle is more rounded with a radius to it. The mesial marginal ridge is the same height as the adjacent central. The distal marginal ridge is the same height as the adjacent lateral incisor. The cingulum development is slightly to the distal of the midline as it is on the adjacent central incisor. The lingual fossa is the same depth and shape as the adjacent central incisor. The wax has been extended and is continuous with the prepared margins of number eight. There is a sharp demarcation between the wax and the unprepared tooth both on the lingual and on the labial. The wax pattern is highly polished, uniformly smooth, with no evidence of scratching or rippling. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.